Today we're going to be talking about a murderer named Patrick Lewis. And to do this with me is my new friend, Renee. And Renee and I don't really know each other yet. Not yet, but I feel like we should. And well, we do. And we share a best friend. We do. Courtney from episode Court, one. Court episode one. And she talks to me about <laughs> Renee, and then she talks to Renee about me, but she's never let us meet. And I think now it's because she doesn't want us to have our own relationship. I think that was it. It's too Clearly. Late. Yes. Yeah. And Renee, you're a mom, and you like true crime. I do. How many kids do you have? I have two boys. Oh. Right. How old are they? They are 13 and 16. <laughs> I know. I'm in it. <laughs> yes. Long showers and bad attitudes. I, oh, when they get them in the shower. Right. right. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going, well, first I should ask you, like I ask every single guest, do you ever worry about either of them becoming criminal? Criminals? Mm. Mm. No, I don't w worry about that. But of course, when I listen to lots of true crime, then you sit, think back like, hmm, but no, not, not criminals. <laughs> not criminals, other things. Other things, other sure. Things. But criminals, no. Well, that's one thing that I think sometimes gets lost in the title of this podcast. It's not just things to make sure your kids don't become serial killers. It's actually good stuff for just raising little Right, humans. which is hard enough as it is. Mm -hmm. So any tips are good tips. Yeah, and I figure the bar is really low. If if all we want to do is make sure they don't become a criminal, we right. killing it. Bonus. Bonus. Right, yes, agreed. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Patrick Lewis. From 1987 to 1998, Gerald Patrick Lewis, known as Patrick, was brutally raping and killing young women. That's not that unusual, unfortunately, in these stories. His MO was to select brown-haired women either by hiring them as sex workers or by running into them on the street and being like, hey, you need a ride? And we know how that goes. Um, in one instance, and I found this to be uh, particularly brutal, he hired an escort named Misty McGuggan. He had sex with her, as she was paid to do, and then he decided he wanted his $150 back that he had just paid her. So he decides to strangle her. And um, he did that first with his hands. He was manually strangling her. Then he used a nylon rope. Um, but then she didn't die right away, which is really inconvenient for him, evidently. So he takes this knife that he brought with him, which I don't hear about in any of the other sources, but he obviously, this wasn't his first kill, and obviously he did plan to kill because you don't bring this, and it's a big knife. I've seen a picture of it. He had it hidden in there. He brings it out. He stabs her. He then wraps her up in a tarp and puts her in his car, and then, no, her car, because he didn't want blood in his car, and he drives her to a wooded area, but then she, he, he hears her coughing. Oh. The poor woman is not dead yet. I mean, she's wishing she's dead at this point, but she's not dead yet. So he gets out, he strangles her again, and then he raped her corpse. I'll never understand that. No. Every once in a while we get those. He did this again and again to multiple women. And his crimes were all very gruesome, but I... I'm not going to get into every single one of them, but I wanted to tell you about that one. And also Peggy Grimes. She was a pregnant woman, eight months pregnant. And he didn't rape her. He didn't rape her. He didn't want to. But he also knew he couldn't let her go. So he kidnaps her. And we're going to get back to why he chose this pregnant woman. It ties back to a very weird situation in his life. And the theme comes up over and over and over again. So he takes her. He stabs her to death. And then he tries to cut out the baby. Yeah. And there were more like that. According to him, he killed a lot more like that. At one point, Patrick stopped killing for a period of time. He kind of cooled down, met a girlfriend, Kim Davis. And one night, she stood him up. And he figured she was with another guy. So in response, he drives to the local bar where she normally hangs out. And he was thinking he'd catch her. And he did. She's there with a man. So he goes out and he waits for Kim in the parking lot in a car he'd stolen because we'll, we'll learn about him. The guy can't keep a car, a car, a job, girlfriend, anything. And as she's getting ready to drive away, he runs up to her car window. He punches it in and he starts hitting her. Her date shows up and was like, no, starts hitting Patrick. Then everyone gets into their car and Patrick escapes. But his erratic movements alerts police. The police pull him over. They say it's a stolen car. Um, they, they end up looking in the car, and they realize that there's a long knife, a steel pipe, and a bunch of other tools that look like he's about to commit a murder or at least a kidnap, kidnapping. So in December of 1993, he gets arrested. And this lands him a sentence of 10 years 
which I think is like kind of low for, yeah. but whatever. He's released in four years mm. and in 19, November of 1997. And of course he goes on just to commit more crimes. After his early release, Patrick went to a local motel bar looking to hook up with another sex worker. And this is kind of what he does. He's into paying for it. So that's where he meets Kathleen Brack- Brocken. I think it's Brocken. Kathleen, also known as Kat, immediately walked up to Patrick and asked him if he wanted to go back to her room. And Patrick obliged, but he was turned off by her price. She was charging $100. And he, in his own words, said, I was thinking more like 50 for her. He describes her having a nice body but a big nose. I'm like, wow. Okay. He says all of this stuff in his confessions, and it's very creepy. So all night long, he tries to talk her down, and he gets frustrated. And eventually, according to him, Kat hit Patrick on the back of the head as he was leaving her room. I don't know if I believe that part. He says he turned around to defend himself, and she bit his finger. And then he threw her down in blind rage. He choked her. And then he raped her. His description of the rape is so bizarre. Um, He's talking about how he knew she was dead or dying, but he could see her private parts and was like, hey, I'm a little horny, so let's get this done. He steals her cash. He stabs her to death while he's in having sex with her, and then he mutilates her body with his knife. After he was satisfied, he rolls Kat up in a sheet, and he left her in the room on the bed. But... There's a catch there. Uh, Kat had a friend with her that night, and he met that friend. She had gone out to get some food. So he has to work quickly. He knows he doesn't have a lot of time because that girl's coming back. She did come back, but she didn't call the police right away because she had warrants. And what kind of friend is that? Immediately after murdering Kat, Patrick left the motel for another bar about a half mile down the road. And there he picked up a woman named Lisa. He brought her back to his mom's house where they had sex. This one is evidently not a sex worker, and I don't know why. He... Right. Busy night, though. It's a busy. It was not done. <laughs> the next morning, after his mom leaves to go to church, Patrick takes Lisa to a secluded dirt road where he planned to have sex with her again and then stab her to death. There are some theories that the reason he needed another woman was because although he um, was able to, you know, have sex with Kat and stab her, he didn't get to do the part which he really likes, which is take people to the woods. That's a theory. I don't know if I buy it. He takes Lisa to a secluded dirt road. He plans to have sex with her, but he didn't follow through with the murder because it just wasn't doing much for him, he says. So now Lisa is a um, witness because he left her alive. Right. But he did take her down the dirt road and kidnapped her. So she's a witness. While the police are digging around for Kat's murder, you know, they have they found her body eventually, although her friend didn't tell the police, somebody else did on her behalf. So they're poking around looking for you know, a murderer. They somehow get in touch with Lisa, and Lisa's able to identify Patrick and explain what he had done to her. So he's arrested for the murder of Kat on April 14th, 1998, and he actually owned up to killing Kat, two women in Georgia, a woman and a woman named Misty in Alabama. That's Misty, who we described earlier. The one, the first one I mentioned, the sex worker who he strangled and didn't quite kill, and then eventually killed her. The detectives also connect him to Peggy Grimes, the pregnant woman, and he stated that there were more victims in Massachusetts, but he didn't say who. So he's ultimately charged with the murders of Misty, Peggy, Kathleen, possibly these two unknown women. I wasn't totally clear, and Peggy's unborn child. Patrick is sentenced to death in 2004. Interestingly, he asked for that. He didn't want um, a trial, but he still had a trial and he was sentenced to death. All right. This is where we go. Okay, why? 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 And what state is this? Sorry. So it's all Alabama and Georgia. Okay. But actually, we'll get into kind of, he was uh, all over the place, but that's mainly where he claims there were a couple of killings in Massachusetts, but... I'm not sure that that was ever, you know, discovered. And sometimes, and this is a horrifying reality, I work, I came across this a lot on my other podcast, sex workers aren't always missed right away. Right. So they don't get reported missing right away. And then I'm hoping this is not the same as it was with, you know, the the hillside stranglers of the 1980s, but... Detectives don't often, back then at least, take those 
deaths as seriously as they might horrible. somebody. It's horrifying. Right. It's horrifying. Well, is it because, I mean, the missing part, because maybe a lot of them are runaways anyways, especially mm-hmm. back then, so they don't even know they're missing. That's maybe. true. Right. A lot of them are runaways, so there's nobody to report it. Right. Yeah. Right. And then maybe it doesn't get investigated as well. Anyway, it takes longer for, and that's one of the reasons why serial killers choose them. It's low-hanging fruit. Right. Easier to get away with. I know. It's really disgusting. Mm-hmm. 